now that we've seen under the hood, let's take a look at the layout and run a train. Okay, I've got it laid, uh, the, the trains installed or placed on the track. I've got an AC 4400. It's pulling maxi uh, cars, the maxi four container cars, and I got two sets of them. So let me start a, around the track and then I'll come back and kind of go over the top portion of the layout. Okay, so typically when I do a commissioning on a layout, I'll run the track or the train really small, uh, slow. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for issues or imperfections or problems in the, the layout or on the track. So a lot of times guys will run the trains and they're, they will run them really fast. And the reason they're running them fast is in order to keep the trains going. And they'll have dead spots or uh, voltage drops in area, you know, in certain areas. And when the train comes there, either it'll slow down or it'll stop or it'll just kind of uh, stutter back and forth and then it clears through. So to kind of mask that, they crank up the speed. And then now what's actually happening is the train is jumping these dead spots. So it's got enough inertia that it's rolling over the dead spot it's, and it doesn't stop. So you don't see anything. So, you, you know, a lot of times you run the layout and after a while you kind of get tired of always going over to, you know, push the train. So you, you start bumping the layout in order to jiggle the train to make it get off the dead spot. So these are all the little things. And remember I said, there's a lot of stuff that when you look at the layout and you, you can kind of see problems based on what you don't see. So for example, the creeping layout or the creeping train. So you can see that it's really, really slow, but there's not stuttering and there's no type of, of, uh, breaks in the movement it's really slow and precise and that's what's good about the Kato engines and their their motors their motors are the five pole motors and they're balanced so the train can creep really really slow so this is uh, i think i'm at 13 percent based on rock rail so here let me change Okay, so there it's running at uh, 10. So this is running at 10%. And now you see how it's slowly creeping, but you don't see the train jumping or anything. Okay, let me speed it up a little bit. Okay, so I bumped it up to 14 again. So I'll let it creep around as, as I talk. So now this particular layout is set up exactly like the the track plan or path is exactly like the Woodland Scenic track. But I went through and kind of tweaked the layout. And what I mean by tweak the layout, I adjusted the radius of the track so it would support all of the engines and, or I shouldn't say all of the engines. Let me explain that one. Let me explain that. The, there's four types of engines that you can get and it's based upon the wheelbase. So you get a small wheelbase, a medium wheelbase, a large wheelbase, and an extra large wheelbase. Now this ACW, this AC 4400, it's a large wheelbase engine and that wheelbase will be reflective of the, or the, the wheelbase and the size 
of the radius of the track has to interact. If the radius is too small and the wheelbase is too long, then the engine will derail. Either the engine will derail or the car will derail. And that's because the wheelbase dictates the throw of the, the coupler. And Cotto makes three types of couplers. They make a short shank, medium shank, and long shank. And this engine has a long shank. And because it has a long shank and the radius is adjusted, it can navigate and pull all of these cars. And, and these types of cars, the long wheelbase. So that's one problem that a guy who doesn't know or a guy who's starting out, he won't see that. And he'll build the layout, and if he has all the small engines, like the F7, F3s, he can run it no problem. But when he starts to bring something in larger, then now, you know, that's it. He, he cannot have a diverse layout or use a, a different, you know, different types of trains. So that starts to limit your ability of what you can do with the layout. And that's what you want to kind of, you know, that's what you want to avoid. So the, and I'll show a, a picture of the, here. So see, this is the, here's the small wheelbase. And now you see the coupler and how short or short the couplers are. Now on this engine, it's got a larger coupler or a longer uh, shank on the, the coupler. And then it, and that adds to your ability to kind of uh, use different uh, types of trains. Now, the also this layout can support the height of the container cars. So you can run the container cars and also the auto uh, loaders, the AUTO loaders. They can, I mean, those are really high and then they have a super long wheelbase as well. So I had to modify inside the tunnel, the back overpass inside the tunnel. I had to modify that to allow for the uh, cars to go under that, that one bridge, that one pass over. Now, the problem that you can run into when you try to change the elevation of that, then you alter the grade. And it, it just, you know, it just creates a domino effect of problems if you're not careful. So that's what I did there that mitigates that, uh, that problem. So you, you can kind of see the, the difference in this layout versus the wooden scenics. And then this is kind of more detailed in the problems that you can run into and the, you know, kind of the cause and effect. So as this train comes around, also what I did was the, on this east side, I installed or put in the super elevated track. And the super elevated track is when it leans six degrees uh, inward. And you can see it as the train comes around, you can see it leans in a little bit, all of the cars. And that gives kind of an added look. And some of the guys who really knows trains and knows the layouts, when they'll see that, they'll be pretty much impressed of seeing the uh, super elevated on this, you know, on a woodland scenic track. So there, as the train passes through, you see how it's just creeping by and now there's no stutter or hesitation. So with this, I'm going to close up the uh, running trains and then we're going to go over to the computer and we're going to look at the rock rail and then the JMRI and look at it interacts with this train.